Hey guys! So we have talked about quite a few things already, like what you need in your pantry, what you eat and what you, what you don't eat, and how to even uh, decide what you want in your pantry and what how to make substitutions the healthier way. And today I wanted to show you my pantry. My pantry is fairly healthy and I have a couple of things to show you that you should not have there. And also we're going to make a list of what we are going to do in the future as far as what to buy more of, what to buy less of, uh, based on your particular lifestyle. So let's go into my pantry and I'll show you different categories of food. Check this out, here's everything I had in my pantry. I call my proteins like I said I don't eat meat very much so these is the, are the things that I rely on besides the grains to get my protein and obviously this is a lot of legumes so we've got lentils here two different types one, all the things that you would normally use ground meat for so and of course we got all sorts of beans right here and chickpeas these things I love you can dry is by far the best because it's cheaper it is it comes in bulk they last forever they of course canned stuff comes in handy when you don't have time to prep just make sure it's organic uh, there's no BPA lining and it is low sodium or no salt added all right next category I want to point your attention to is healthy fats nuts and seeds so let's start with nuts and seeds I've got a lot of almonds first of all you guys you don't need a whole lot of fats in your diet honestly so this even this is way too much why do I have so much well because first of all I didn't know what was in my pantry so I kept buying more second I had some items stored away in my food storage and now that we're moving I don't want to drag it all around with me so here they are all in my pantry it's not ideal but whatever don't buy any of the pre-salted roasted uh, flavored stuff just raw plain almonds and then here I've got some chia seeds and some hemp seeds which both are amazing for your healthy omegas and then right here is flax seeds so now, nutritional yeast it's not quite a, a fat or a seed or anything it is just something uh, in my particular plant-based diet, it's really high in vitamins and minerals, so I do sprinkle, and it's got kind of like a, a cheesy taste to it. Flavored almonds, amazing in oatmeal, and some other nuts, currently walnuts, sometimes I have cashews or peanuts, and right here I have coconut, and of course right here I have coconut milk. Right next to it, I have my healthy fats and oils. So of course, I have my peanut butter, but you guys know, if you ever looked at the label, uh, one serving, which is just two tablespoons, has 200 calories, and just about all of it is from fat. So I am not saying do not eat peanut butter, but just eat it sparingly, and don't eat it a whole lot. You only need about two teaspoons of oil in uh, the whole day. Now again, this thing, is uh, peanut butter too it's basically powdered peanut butter it is the same thing with uh, most of the oil and fat removed from it uh, it is not necessarily a whole foods option it is um, it is still processed but in case you guys want to make some peanut butter cookies or some sort of peanut butter bars and you don't want that whole bunch of oil in there uh, but you want a little more flavor you can mix add just a tiny bit of that stuff and The rest in this now a coconut oil make sure you have uh, virgin coconut oil uh, Organic and unrefined that's the stuff that really smells like coconut because refined stuff mm -hmm. is highly processed Also great thing is that coconut oil is a medium um, medium chain um, amino acids so basically it uh, it's easy for your body to use it for energy rather than get stored as fat right away and it still carries all your fat soluble vitamins around to your cells 
Uh, this, uh, you don't particularly need oils in your cooking, especially if you have good enough dishes for it or cookware. But currently I have this bottle of grapeseed oil that I need to finish. I just have a little bit right here. So when I cook, I add just about maybe a quarter to a half of a teaspoon of that. So let's move on to the next category here, which I loosely define as my baking. So you guys might have a little bit of different categories. I have my chocolate chips. These are dark, uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips and my cacao nibs which are really high in antioxidant and just a pure cocoa powder right here, which I also have a ton of, again, for the same reason. I now, wheat flour we've had for a long time. It also comes with my food from uh, my food storage area. So we just have a little bit of left. I've been making some bread instead of buying bread, which worked out great. Uh, great. Baking powder, now make sure this stuff is aluminum free because aluminum in your food it just doesn't go there. It causes cancer and all sorts of stuff. Uh, right here I have a couple of uh, pancake mixes, which is my homemade protein uh, pancake mix. And this one is just the um, Kodiak stuff that Costco sells. And right here there's more flour. So I have, right here I have coconut flour and some white rice flour and some teff flour and garbanzo flour. Another category I have right here is just my sports nutrition basically. So I have creatine and I have some pre-workout right here. This is amazing stuff, it's really clean. Uh, I only use it not every time I work out, but only when I am lacking energy, when I didn't sleep well, etc. Here's all sorts of samples of plant-based proteins. And this is also Kyle's, I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, but I also have a couple of different plant-based protein powders right here that are clean and just sometimes when I don't feel like eating a whole meal but I need something high protein to keep me you know to tie me over till the next meal um, I just make a protein shake pantry is not really a place for vegetables what you're going to do with your veggies is you're gonna buy them fresh or frozen and keep them in your fridge or freezer but some of the things totally do go in the pantry for instance it could be some sort of pasta sauce again watch the ingredients because they like to put all sorts of corn syrup in there and sugar and you don't want any of that uh, pumpkin another good thing you can sub it you can put it in your baking instead of butter it makes a lot of good baking actually you can make smoothies with it you can put it on your oatmeal and so forth and tomato sauce and tomato paste would actually be better options than pasta sauces because they usually don't have any additives and then again those little things like diced chilies and some olives olives is actually um, not technically a vegetable in your in a dietary sense it's actually a fat so also don't go too heavy on those uh, yeah now next thing right here is the category that you don't necessarily have to have it is simply my obsession I am obsessed with superfoods and generally foods as um, prevention of disease and even cure of disease so I'm not gonna go through every single thing here but I've got some organic turmeric and lucuma powder and vanilla bean powder uh, that is just pure vanilla bean and some matcha and uh, beet powder and maca powder but really guys you can cut all that completely out if you drink this every day I have some every single day and uh, my husband has some um, more often than not and I even give it to my son he loves it and it is just a whole blend of all sorts of superfood right here it's a proprietary blend of protein there is also antioxidants and phytonutrients and the ones that actually um, zap the inflammation out of your cells and we've got the adaptogens that help your body deal with environmental stress and of course you got your probiotics prebiotics and enzymes because everything starts in your gut everything from a headache to anxiety to depression you can really help all those conditions by getting your gut back in shape and that really I am going to just finish all of those and I'm not gonna buy any more of those because I have that next category I've got here is sweeteners and I definitely have a ton but 
Here, check this out first of all. This is a staple in many people's diets in America. Now, we have this bag since the days Kyle, uh, Kyle's used to make uh, water kefir or kombucha, whatever he was making. So that required a lot of sugar because that bacteria eats the sugar. Other than that, I do not use this and I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it. It's probably just going to go into the trash. Now he, right here, another thing from those days is molasses, which I do use right now to make my uh, homemade wheat bread. Next thing right here is honey. If you can get your hands um, on some local sort of honey, which is really high in antioxidants, that's amazing. Blue agave is another source of sweetener. Of course, these have a lot of carbs as well, so uh, don't go heavy on those, all right? Another good thing for baking or oatmeal is coconut uh, palm sugar, or you can use some date sugar or whatever you can find on hand. Just make sure it's not that stuff. This right here, sometimes it is actually based on sugar, alcohol, and stevia. So I sometimes use it for baking. I don't particularly like it, but again, I bought this bag a long time ago. It seriously has been years. And it's still here, so next time I'll know not to buy such a big bag. But honestly, you guys, uh, day in and day out, this is the stuff that I use the most. This is pure stevia. Uh, drops and a lot of the times when you are making something you can totally use some vanilla and That way you can cut down on sugar because this adds a lot of good flavor Related to this category is my dry fruit category right now. I have uh, plums Craisins and golden berries, which is totally a random mix because my usual one is dates figs and raisins That's what I normally have so and lastly, I'm going to bring you over to this bin right here, which is a snack bin. So again, normal thing for a person, a family to have is some sort of chips in their pantry. Now, Kyle happens to be a fan of salt and vinegar chips. Sure, he buys organic, but it doesn't make it any um, better for you, really. There's no nutritional value in that kind of stuff. There's only empty calories. There's tons of fat that you don't need in your diet because I would personally prefer you to get uh, your fat from healthy sources of fat, like avocado, like peanut butter, nuts, seeds, uh, olives, things like that. Now, this is uh, my favorite thing lately, which is for a snack, just because they're very high in protein. These are organic and they are pretty, well, I mean, they've got carbs, but for a you know good snack like that, it's pretty low in carbs, so compared to a lot of snacking. And of course, we've got some sort of protein bars. I make sure mine are vegan and non-GMO because everything that has soy in it, you gotta make sure is non-GMO. And then a lot of people like to have some sort of crackers. More often than any of this, I have rice cakes, which I also buy brown rice, unsalted, organic. And then for a sweet tooth, I've got a little bit of dark chocolate covered espresso beans right here and some of these green tea candies. Totally not necessary. I don't even remember when was the last time I had either one of these. I just had my lunch and I've been watching this documentary on Netflix that is called Food Matters highly recommend you guys highly recommend okay so let's move on to some of the other things that I have right here I actually don't keep my teas and coffees in the pantry I keep them right here on the counter there's all sorts of varieties of teas right here and there's coffee and of course my stevia and some of these um, natural non-alcoholic flavors right here that I also like to add to my either baking or some tea and coffee and so forth and the next thing is right here is my spice rack. It is full, full, full right now, but there's nothing really inherently wrong with spices, you guys. They're great as long as they're not like blends that have a ton of salt added to them. So, but we do make a lot of um, Indian food. We have all these different spices and these two shelves are by far the most, the, the most used right here. And down there we just have some curry powder and some salt and vanilla and so forth. So here's the pantry. This is our side. We're sharing this house. Uh, so this is our side of the pantry and it still looks horrible guys, but to me it makes sense because I have separated everything by category and I put some bins right here on the bottom with um, snacks and sweeteners and uh, my superfoods right here. So there they are. 
we are gonna try and finish as much of this stuff as possible before we have to move. It still makes me sick thinking about moving all this stuff because I really do hate throwing food away, you guys. And there's not really anywhere, anywhere to, or anybody to donate it to because they're all pretty much open packages. So yeah, if you have any ideas of what I can do with it, let me know. Uh, we're gonna try and live from the pantry these next couple months before we have to figure out what to do with it all. So now I want you guys to come up with a system for your own pantry. Your categories that you need to include for sure. Now make sure they're healthy of course, right? So you want your grains, you want your proteins, you want your vegetable or sauces or whatever, and you want your healthy fats and nuts and seeds. So you guys, in the next couple of days, as soon as we talk about recipes, I want you to show me your pantry. What you've done, snap a picture now, snap a picture after, and show me tell me what you are going to do in the future and what have you been doing in the past that you will stop doing and what will you keep doing the future of your family your future your health is going to depend largely on how you manage your food oh so that's it you guys for today i'll see you later